Stanley Milgram's experiment is one of the most famous social psychology experiments and it's a key study that you need to know for your exam. You need to be able to explain or describe the aim, the procedure, the findings and conclusions of Milgram's study and also to be able to evaluate the study in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Milgram's research started after the war in his interest in the understanding of why so many Nazis obeyed the orders of, of a few of a very small group when it came to the annihilation of the Jews. Milgram was interested by the trials such as Adolf Eichmann, who was one of the lead Nazis who committed the murders against the Jews. Now Eichmann stood in his trial and claimed that the responsibility of these murders did not lie with him. Eichmann stated that he was only following orders. He abdicated his conscience and responsibility, stating that his orders came from Adolf Hitler and his superiors and therefore he takes no responsibility for his crimes. Milgram wanted to test this idea of obedience. He wanted to see whether German people were just different, whether there was something within their society that socialised them to obey, and something that maybe Americans or Western culture didn't have. And he wanted to see whether this obedience to authority was something that was cross-cultural, or whether the Germans were simply different. Stanley Milgram's original experiment was a lead experiment within the social psychology approach. He conducted his experiment in Yale University and he wanted to see the extent of which people were willing to obey an authority figure even when what they're being asked to do conflicts with their personal conscience. So his aim was to investigate how far people would go in obeying an authority figure. The procedure of his study was concerned with the size of the electric shock that a person would be prepared to give another person and he told the participants that the study was on the effects of punishment with learning. Think ethics straight away. We know the study was on obedience. He told participants it was the effect of punishment on learning. So straight away we've got a case of deception. Milgram recruited 40 volunteers through a volunteer sample. He put an ad in a newspaper and he agreed to pay each of the participants that volunteered $4.50 on arrival. Copy of the newspaper article that Milgram put in the newspaper. Now Milgram's original experiment was a lab experiment and it involved an experimenter, which was a 31-year-old biology teacher, very importantly dressed within a grey lab coat. The participant that he used was used as the teacher and he actually had a confederate, somebody who was in on it, acting as the learner. Milgram was interested by the trials such as Adolf Eichmann, who was one of the lead Nazis who committed the murders against the Jews. Now Eichmann stood in his trial and claimed that the responsibility of these murders did not lie with him. If we look at the picture on the screen here, you can see that it's a very thin wall that separates the student and the teacher, so the confederate and the genuine participant. Interestingly, you can also see that the experimenter is in the same room as the teacher, and we'll get to why that's important later. Now, the thin wall that separated them allowed the teacher, who was the participant, to hear the so-called screams of the learner throughout the experiment. So as the learner was told to memorise the words, every time they got them wrong, the teacher increased the shock by 15. You can see on the picture on the screen how the shocks were also labelled. So every time it went up, you can see how they're categorised together. Slight shock, moderate shock, strong shock. Now you can see where it goes up to 450 volts. It's actually just labelled XXX. Now through this thin wall, as I mentioned before, the learner was making cries, things like, ah, that hurts, please stop, I can't take this anymore. And the interesting thing was to see how the teacher responded when they knew that the learner was in pain as a result of their actions.
Now, how far did the participants go? Now, this was the DV, this was the dependent variable that Milgram was measuring. Now, he operationalized this idea of measuring levels of obedience, and he narrowed that down specifically and made his DV the level or the number of volts that the teacher was willing to administer. Now, interestingly, you can see that 100% of participants, every single teacher, went at least to 300 volts on the shock generator. 65% of the participants went all the way to the 450 volts right at the end, which was marked XXX. Now, in actual fact, the learner received no shocks at all, and obviously this was a setup. The recording that they could hear, the, vict the victim's voice, the learner's voice, was a pre-recorded -re -pre audio tape, uh, which convinced the participant of the authenticity or the realness of the situation. Now, I mentioned before that the experimenter was in the same room as the teacher. This is really important because at times when the teacher was hesitating or unsure whether to continue, the experimenter would give the teacher a prod such as please continue or the experiment requires that you continue. It's absolutely essential that you can continue the experiment. The experiment ended when either the teacher, so the participant, refused to continue anymore or actually if they went all the way to the end to the 450 volts and they, administ they administered the maximum shock. Now, at the end of the experiment, all the participants were debriefed fully by Milgram and they were told the real nature of the experiment. Importantly here, they were reintroduced to the learner in a very friendly way that assured them that they had not caused any harm to the other, well, confederate, as we now know, uh, at all, and that the whole thing was a setup. This was an attempt by Milgram to ensure that ethics wasn't breached so badly, so he was trying to make sure that the participants weren't distressed and that he was restoring them to their previous psychological state. Now, interestingly, you can see that 100% of participants, every single teacher, went at least to 300 volts on the shock generator. 65% of the participants went all the way to the 450 volts right at the end, which was marked XXX. If we look at the picture on the screen here, you can see that it's a very thin wall that separates the student and the teacher, so the confederate and the genuine participant. Now, the thin wall that separated them allowed the teacher, who was the participant, to hear the so-called screams of the learner throughout the experiment. Now, in the post-experimental interview, because it's worth remembering here that another way that, that Milgram protected his participants is he actually followed them a year later um, and did another experiment, another interview with them to see how they were getting on. And when he said to them afterwards, how painful did you think that the shocks at the very end were? The mean response out of 14 was 13.42, said it was extremely painful. Now, this is really important because it shows that the participants absolutely did believe what they were doing was true. So it gives the experiment experimental validity. Now, Milgram concluded that obedience is therefore exceptionally strong to the point where people were willing to shock another person to the point where they would have died before they disobeyed an authority figure. Just a quick note to remember in the exam here, if you are asked about what obedience means, please don't start putting obedience means to obey. When you're elaborating on Milgram's study, it's really important that you include these details and you, under, you explain that you understand these key words that you're using. Now, when it comes to evaluating Milgram's study, you need to use GRAVE. We've talked about this before, generalizability, reliability, applications, validity, and ethics. So the strengths of Milgram's experiment, it's a very well-controlled experiment where the procedure was standardized. So by that, I mean that the prods that the experimenter gave were standardized. It was the same for every single participant. The learner's cries, the pleas for it all to stop was a tape recording that every single participant heard. So there was no difference in the experience that they were having within the experiment. Now, this gives the experiment reliability. And it means that because these standardized procedures were in place, if we replicated this experiment, we would expect to find the same findings. Again, because Milgram's experiment was a laboratory experiment, it means that it was really well controlled, which means that he avoided extraneous variables and able to see this cause and effect relationship between the IV and the DV. Now, Milgram's work was a landmark in obedience explanations. It was one of the big social psychology studies that's still studied, obviously, today. And from there, it led to a lot of follow-on research, such as Hoffling did a very similar study using nurses in the hospital, where they took orders over a phone to administer a deadly dose to a, a patient, and, and he wanted to see if they would do that, and they did.
Now, Milgram's study also has experimental validity in the fact that the participants did believe what they were doing was true. They believed it was a real situation, as we talked about before. However, Milgram's study obviously has some weaknesses that we need to be able to talk about. It's said that the situation was absolutely ridiculous. People do not have to kill someone if they get a memory game wrong. And that, again, is arguing against this experimental validity. You know, how can you generalise from this? How can you draw conclusions from this where the setup that they were in is absolutely ridiculous? The researchers told the participants that they were responsible, therefore the participants put their trust in the research. This is another argument that suggests that the study doesn't test what it's supposed to be testing. Now Milgram has been absolutely slated for the ethics within this study and it's been deemed absolutely unethical because participants were highly distressed, some of them had panic attacks, they had laughing fits, they just couldn't cope with what they were doing. Milgram lied to them, he obviously deceived the participants, he told them it was about punishment in learning and not about obedience, although later, Milgram later justifies why he did this. And it's argued that he doesn't give the participants a chance to withdraw. Because the experimental prods were given, the experiment requires you to continue, the argument is that participants were not free to leave. Orn and Holland argued that Milgram's study was not a test of obedience because the participants didn't take it seriously. Some argue that the participants were simply showing demand characteristics because it was an experimental situation. Yale University is a really prestigious environment. They were just, they were just doing as they were told because it was an experiment and not necessarily obeying an authority figure. The experiment is evidence of trust in it, the experimenters, and not obedience to authority. And again, there's critique of Milgram's sample here in the sense that they were volunteers. They self-selected, they chose to take part, so therefore the results cannot be generalised. Again, this idea that there is something different about a volunteer. It's also worth noting that this study used only men, but I would be careful when referencing this in an exam. Milgram did up to 19 variations of this original study, and variation number 8 did include women. So I would be careful saying that you can't generalise to women. Now, a top tip for achieving those high grades within the exam, we can't just keep referring to validity, you know, does it measure what it's supposed to measure? We need to be able to start differentiating and talking about different types of validity. So, experimental validity, did the participants believe that the experiment was real and what is our evidence for this? Ecological validity refers to the real life ability, the real life um, of, the, of the experiment. So whether the participants would behave, behave in the same way if they weren't in an experimental setting, if it was their real life. And population validity is whether the sample that he used does represent the population and therefore can we generalise from this. There's a bit of an overview which I suggest you do for your revision, is just drawing it together. Don't forget on an exam, even up to a 12 mark question, you're looking at two marks for the aim, two for the method, two for the results, two for the conclusion. And then obviously you, if you're asked to evaluate. So a good summary of this and just draw out the key information is a really good idea for revision.